It, it, it's stacker's discouragement right now. They want to throw in the towel. <laughs> oh, I can understand that. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Coming on the heels of my last video on silver and gold and why precious metals should not be treated like a traditional investment, but rather as wealth insurance or a hedge against various threats, I decided to get my gold and silver dealer Tim Marshner's take on it. Gold, silver. How does he think precious metals should be viewed? Does he think gold and silver make great investments to build your wealth? In this video, you'll find out. And you'll also hear him and give advice to the discouraged stacker. And finally, you'll hear Tim discuss the possibility that silver could one day be used as a barter currency to purchase goods and services. You said you wanted more Tim, so I'm giving you more Tim. And all it costs is a simple smash of the like button. <laughs> right down there. <laughs> no, not really. You can still listen to Tim without liking this video. But if you don't, I'll tell Tim you don't like him. <laughs> I get a lot of emails. I get DMs. People saying, Yankee, that's it. I'm done. I, I've, I've waited for years for silver to go up. And I'm discouraged. It, it, it's stacker's discouragement right now. They want to throw in the towel. Oh, I can understand that. But that's a very short-term view. I mean, anybody who's been around since, say, 1980 with that run-up, um, which was the highest in the history of gold. And then um, in 2011, gold hit another high, the highest time, you know, in the history of gold. And then last year it hit another, you know, the $2,000 break. Um, yeah, gold, it, it always gets back to where it was. It may take a while, but it always gets back to where it was. Silver, on the other hand, it's still too easy to control. And, you know, the only good thing about them keeping it down is we probably won't see any more of these massive shorts. Not for a while. I mean, it's just, it's not good business. You know, if you want to short something, short something like oil, that's, you know, 70 something dollars a barrel and see if you can drive it down to 66 and then maybe buy start buying it back like somebody did i'm not sure who was doing that but, um the, the metals unfortunately silver is cheap i mean the the ratio got down to something like 63 or 66 you know at least for a short day a day or two mm -hmm. now it's back up to over 75 it's like 75 76. um that doesn't make uh, economic sense it doesn't make you know realistic sense because they're both precious metals um, every day silver has more uses yeah um, you're not discouraging people from stacking silver oh i, I think <laughs> silver is a tremendous buy i think it's a tr much much better than it has been for years uh, look at the ratio i would tell you yep. that i mean you, everybody thought it was a great buy last year you know when it dropped down to twelve dollars and fifty cents well what could you buy at twelve dollars and fifty cents? Absolutely nothing. And I remember when it was fourteen fifty, we put an order together for a fellow a number of hundred ounce silver bars, and they came in at nineteen. And I said, "You sure you want to do this?" He said, "Oh, it'll never see that price again." And he was right. You know, so maybe you can buy one if you have a wholesaler who is willing to work on the paper market. And he kind of, kind of has to because the refineries have to work in the paper market. So, you know, when he's getting a quote from a refinery, it's whatever the paper market is that they're paying, they're buying it or selling it at. Um, the higher you, you go up the food chain, the closer you get to that paper market. But that's not a, a, um, an image of supply and demand, not even close. Supply and demand is way over that. And, you know, this, the best indicator of that is I'm selling the uh, Silver Eagles for, you know, 36, 37 um, because of what they cost us. Uh, that's way over the current prices of, what are you, 23, 30 right. or 40 or whatever it is. Um, but I don't see that changing because that price is established somewhere between the U.S. Mint and their distributors. 
And by the time the wholesalers get it, it's it's well above that. You know, if I'm paying, you know, 12, 10, 20 dollars, whatever it is I'm paying over, he's probably paying a dollar less than that. So it's that we're all paying the same price. You know, it's the the fact is there's very little silver coming on, back on the market. I mean, it, it's being mined, but all those mines are shut down for almost a year. So they're you know they're coming back online. But 75% still comes from byproduct mining. 25% comes from silver mining. So what would Tim Marshner say to a stacker of maybe three to five years who wants to give up, who is looking at silver as a traditional investment that's going to make him money? Uh, there are better investments. If that's your goal is to make money, there are better investments. If your goal is to put your money in a safe place that you can use for barter in the future when the dollar starts to hit uh, rough times, mm -hmm. and the dollar will. I mean, you, you can't take our, our um, short-term debt from $27 trillion to $36 trillion and expect there not to be massive inflation, okay? massive inflation. And right now, um, yeah, you listen to different people, they have different uh, estimates. I mean, I heard somebody in the government saying, well, well we've kept inflation down to around 2.5%. Well, then I'm listening to CNBC and, and Fox Business, and they're saying, yeah, it's about 54 to 5.7%. Well, who's right? Uh, if you shop at the same market that I shop at, it's more than 5%. I'm kidding. And it's, you know, that's, that's everything. Okay, now we can't get chips to make cars. So what's going to happen? The car the price of the cars are going up. In the meantime, while we're waiting for those chips to be delivered in the new cars and new cars to be repriced, the old uh, cars are picking up in value. So they're going up in price. Uh, look at the price of homes around, I don't know if it's just New Hampshire, but um, the price of a new home is crazy. Someone said that today's financial analysts 40% of them, if not more, haven't gone through a bear market. This, the That's COVID right. dip was That's fast. Right. They don't know the, the inflation impacts. And they also don't realize that, that you gotta get out ahead of this. Once it gets going, it is almost impossible to stop. What's in play right now is the same as it was in 2007 and 2008. The difference is, it uh, looks like they're starting with the TARP program instead of ending with the TARP program. <laughs> Every month, like $120 billion of toxic assets. Right. They call them mortgage-backed securities, which makes them sound good. Right. But where do those mortgages come from? They're coming from mortgage brokers that the bank doesn't want any part of, so they're selling off to, what, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or whatever. So if silver and gold aren't necessarily a you know, fantastic traditional investment, how would you view them? I think gold is an excellent place to put your money. If you're, you know, a chunk of money. Well, it is money, right? <laughs> well, it is money, but I mean, put put a, a chunk of your, your holdings in gold and put it away and don't worry about it, okay? It'll be there when you need it, if you need it. Silver, um, I think silver can become a barter currency very quickly. You know, when, when um, you need to buy things that you can't easily find, like guns and ammo, um, you can pull out the silver. Uh, you know, not only that, I mean, if you're in a rural area, uh, pretty soon you'd be able to buy uh, food for, you know, vegetables and fruits for, for silver. Um, and it's already happening in many states. But will the manipulation have to stop first? Um, well, I, I, friends of mine that live in a western state post the price at 8.30 in the morning and at 1.30 in the afternoon, where are they getting the price? They're either getting it from the London fix or they're getting it from the COMEX. So uh, yeah, the paper price is there as a guide. When it comes to physical silver, that market is controlled by supply and demand. All right, I need to buy some silver. <laughs> Good thought. What do you got for me, Tim? <laughs> uh, I only have about 30 or 35 10 ounce silver bars. Um, I have maybe a dozen of the five ounce uh, tombstones. Oh, They're more the popular than I thought they were going to be. Really? Yeah. That hammered look? Yeah, but yeah. we lowered the price on everything, so.
I have a whole lot of the uh, Type 2 Silver Eagle. Okay. Lots of tubes and tubes of them. Tubes and tubes. Yep. How, so, how about Type 1? Are they gone? I'm probably down to two tubes on a Type 1. And I'm sure I can get more. I couldn't tell you what the price is. I may find out. I'm going down tomorrow morning. I actually might stuff. go with a Type 1. Not just for nostalgic yeah, purposes, I, I but for... I think Type 1 has a good future. Because yeah. It, it obviously is going to be very low mintage compared to Type 2. And um, hmm. at least for 2021. Somebody questioned my selling the um, Type 2 for uh, $37. Okay. And so I pulled out my receipt. So what I pay is $36. So if I can't make a dollar a coin, I might as well get out of the business. But that's what we make it on all this stuff. I have several items that I'm losing money on now, or at least, you know, making 20 cents an ounce or 30 cents an ounce, just because, you know, I purchased it before it hit 23, 40, whatever it is. And, um, you know, I got to sell the stuff I have before I can buy more stuff at a lower price. I also have to get some constitutional. I got to get back into that too. Yeah, I've been storing it up for I knew you were coming in. <laughs> all right, thanks, Tim. <laughs> Tim, to me, me take all my Franklin's. <laughs> I remember doing that. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right.